I want one hundred crore rupees. One hundred crore rupees. Right? Now this is the public. They want to give money, but there is no single person who can give you one hundred crore. That's one problem. The financial intermediation will help you. It will facilitate transaction. It will pull up the capital. That's fine. In addition to that. Within you, I want this money for say 20 years, 100 crores for 20 years. But uh, the class is divided, public is divided. One wants to give you for 5 years, one wants to give you for 20 years, one wants to give you for 30 years. The class is divided. So there is a maturity difference. Okay? So financial intermediaries, they collect the money, pull up the money irrespective of the maturities of tenure and give it to the people who wants. That we call it as maturity transformation. In banking, we call it as asset liability management. The banks give loans, it becomes asset. Liabilities are deposits. Deposits are for one day, one month, one five days, one year, three years, five years, ten years, maybe more than that. But loan is given for 20 years or 30 years. These people cannot ask or cannot wait till 20 years. Okay? So, maturity transformation is done by the financial intermediaries. Then, risk transformation. Similarly, one person giving me 100 crores, your risk is involved. Your risk is involved. Yes, sir. So, a person is there who is wealthy, he or she wants to give 10 crores as lending or as investment. But he or she wants to diversify. Because all the companies may not do well. So, what happens because of this financial intermediation, the 10 crores which comes here goes to different places, not just one. Aggregation will be done. That we call it as risk transformation. This is the major function of a financial intermediary, the financial system of a bank. That's the beauty of financial intermediation. Not just that, it gives a provision for innovation for markets as well as institutions. Right? We discussed about the uh, uh, financial instruments in the previous sessions. Now let us extend those discussions into how to categorize these financial instruments into different uh, classes or categories or types. A financial instrument, one way it is an asset, the other way it is a liability. Okay. All are not assets, with service, not an asset, but it is a liability. Let us call it as liability. The size of Then, second case, 
size is known, uh, timing unknown or uncertain. What is this? What do you say? Size is known. How much to give? You know. But when you give, the company doesn't know. What kind of financial liability is that? Is there any example? Life insurance. Sorry, very good. Life insurance. You said that? Yeah. Life insurance. It is a one crore sum assured policy given. But in the case of death of the person who got insured, the company has to pay. So 1 to 20 years tenure, in between any time the company should be ready. So that's how it is unknown or uncertain. Okay? The third case. Uh, uh, size, size of the liability to be paid is unknown. Okay, and timing is timing is no. Anything like that? Sorry. Zero. Bonds. Deep discounted bonds. Zero bond bonds. Deep discounted bonds. Sorry. Deep discounted bonds. Discounted bonds that is known before uh, offering the bonds. I will clearly tell you how much I will give you when I will give you. It's known, but here the question is you don't know how much to give, you don't know, but when to give, you know. I think someone saying here uh, that I said, Is there any truth? It happens with SIP. No, it happens with the floating rate bonds or deposits. I offer you bonds or deposits elsewhere. Interest rate is such open rate is not fixed. It varies according to the market conditions, year on year, quarter on quarter, or monthly, based on the terms. Okay? So sizes are known. How much to pay I don't know. But when to pay I don't know. That's the third class. And finally, fourth one, unknown. Any idea? How much to pay? I don't know. When to pay? I don't know. Sorry? General insurance. Yeah. How much to pay? I don't know. And when to pay? I don't know. There are not all. Some of the general insurance uh, policies are there. Very uh, some product, some service. Some process, some system for insured forever. In that case, how much to pay, when to pay, and then it's not. Did you understand? So, this way, financial intermediation offers financial innovation, which is seen through financial instruments, markets, institutions, and their respective services. Got it? Question? Is it clear? Sure. So, if you are clear, let me go to the next point. What are the financial institutes which are intermediaries? What are the financial institutes who are not intermediaries? Did you get the question? What are the financial institutes which are pure intermediaries? Financial institutions which are pure intermediaries, financial institutions which are partly intermediaries. If you take bank, when you say financial intermediary, and you want an example of a financial institute, it's a bank. The sole job or objective of banking is accept deposits in loans. It's a pure intermediate. Apart from that, we have some other financial institutions who render services. They offer services, credit rating companies, mutual fund companies, mutual fund companies are intermediaries, factoring companies, underwriting their companies. There are many who are partially intermediaries. They work on selling the services directly to the Retail individuals like you and me, or corporates, or government bodies, or governments. That's what I'm trying to differentiate. Is it fine? 
So when you have banking, banks play a major role in financial intermediation. I think as I told you, before my thesis, banks are everything for India. All public sector banks were dictating terms. Interest rate was fixed. All exchange rate was fixed. Everything was fixed. But later on, they transformed into different verticals like uh, within commercial banking, they had corporate banking, retail banking, agricultural banking. Yeah. They had merchant banking. Cross selling. They jumped out of uh, traditional banking. They also started selling mutual fund products, life insurance products, and so on. So, a mere bank is not a bank nowadays. It is beyond a bank. That's the innovation they had to maximize the profits. The same is the case with markets, financial markets. Can I take some markets from you? We are seeing a stock. Stock Yeah. Capital markets. Order. Capital markets. Capital market. You see. Stock market. Derivative markets. Money market. Order. Money market. We have different markets. But we talk about financial markets. We have. Capital market, money market, derivatives market, commodities market is a kind of derivatives market. Sorry? Forex market, stock market, you said, it is part of capital market. Within that, you have primary market, secondary market, and so on, OTC markets, and so on. We will discuss that in the second year. Okay. Now, why I am talking about markets now is, I told you India got transformed into a markets oriented financial system. Okay? The way I was talking about banking, where they got transformed into a big, a big in terms of size, they transformed because of their diversified services, banking services. Same is the case with uh, financial markets, importantly, capital markets, forex markets, and derivative markets. So it's a money market also. But we have to talk about capital markets. That's the reason we have our dedicated module for capital markets. But to be on that, capital market, we have home stock exchange, we have national stock exchange, and your, these are the national level exchanges where we call them as national stock exchanges. Apart from that, you also have regional stock exchanges. Hyderabad Stock Exchange, Madras Stock Exchange, MSC, Calcutta Stock Exchange, CSC, Bangalore Stock Exchange, BGSC, like that. Okay. We have many. Okay. Markets are there. They are also innovative because of technology. Technology has made their business grow. Exponentially, not now, I'm talking about late 90s and early 2000, 2002, 2000 onwards. Exponentially, because they substituted technology the trading platforms. Load based trading, open outcry based trading, gone. Technology driven trading platforms are substituted. Because of that, market came into the Private spaces of working people or homemakers, even students. Even now, later, now you are getting the markets on your mobile phone. Smartphone, you can operate the markets. So that's how these guys have operated. When you, when you talk about markets, it's quite important to introduce participants of them. You have brokers, you have dealers. Is there a difference between a broker and dealer? A dealer is a kind of market maker. Is a, you can't call him as a trader. A dealer is a person who has to give both bid and ask. Both. Even if you want to buy, you want to give a quote for sell. That's how they make the market active. Got it? So they're part of business. They're doing business. 
they are investing, they are trading. Whereas in the case of broker, as you are trying to say, you said that he is a pure intermediary, he is neither a buyer nor a seller. The commission he gets from the people who buy and sell is a photo, that is sold book. That is his interest as a broker. We have stock brokers, we have members, uh, we have sub brokers, we have franchises also. Actually, stock broker is not an official word in India, we call them as members. Member in NSC, member in ESC. There's no word called broker in general. We will talk more about them. In addition to that, I think Param, you are asking me what is, who is an arbitrator, one of these issues, I remember. So let us talk about that. Trader, arbitrator, hedger, speculator. Four guys. Investor. And these four are not investors. Please don't mix these people. Investor is different from trader, arbitrator, speculator, and hedger. These four guys are different from this guy. These people want to make quick money or they have some other objective. But this guy wants to make money through professional research or analysis to either the same. There's a big difference. In this I don't tell you. Objective is to maximize the profit. And who is a trader? The trader is the person who tries to make money quickly. If I feel that this stock price is going to fall down, then what I do? Sell. I try to sell it and wait the price comes down and buy it again. The difference is the profit. I prefer short margins. Short margins. That's the reason traders buy it by. They don't buy 5 or 10 shares. They buy 1000 or 1 lakh or even maybe million shares. The reason is they have 50 pi or 1 rupee or a quarter rupee. 25 pi or 10 pi margin is there. I want to get out of the trade. So traders are like that. And it does not mean that they always make uh, profits. I think one day I was telling you about a uh, Vineshwara uh, Securities person in my side. People who are trading aggressively. Do you remember? I don't know. The big session, but I told you. Those are traders. Speculators. Speculators are also kind of traders. You can call traders as speculators also. But speculators have genuine reason. Okay. So the inflation numbers are coming tomorrow and positive on that. Infosys numbers are going to be out and positive on that. So I will take a position right now. Okay, a war situation is there in the neighboring in the neighboring countries. I speculate. Okay, gold price and gold trying to shoot up and which metal companies, jewelry making companies will be hit, I will speculate. Information, information based speculation. Trader only money. He doesn't know what is the share. He looks only about price. He doesn't know which company is that, what company is that, where it is engaged. No. But speculator related to the stock price, he has some logical Okay. So trader, speculator, Arbitration. He tries to make a difference between two markets. As simple as that. The price is 110 rupees here, and the price in this market is 109 rupees. So, what he will do? He will buy here, sell here. He will keep on doing this till this comes down and this goes up. Equally, he is the arbitrage. Finally, measure. Is the person who tries to take takes the risk position. Okay. If I have a portfolio of stocks, I may buy a short position or long position in some of the derivative instruments. I hedge my risk associated with the instruments. He is close to the investor. But speculator, trader, arbitrator, they are all related to investments. Did you get that? All of you? Yes, sir. Yeah. So markets. Instruments, participants, financial institutions, banks, and services, they fall into the Okay, And they bridge the gap between supply and the services. And remember, they are not doing alone, they are working alone. All these components, all these financial units are independent. The initial definition we had that. Okay? But they are interrelated, interdependent. 
Thank you. 